What's going on guys, Brad here, and in this video, I'll show you a few things you can do to get better bass in your home theater without buying a mini DSP. Sound good? Then let's go. So the last four videos that I posted went in depth with setting up the mini DSP with multiple subs and how to get them time aligned and EQ'd as well as covering some other stuff but I wanted this video to be different and focus on what you can do with your current system and setup while showing you a few tips and tricks that can get you better bass and smoother frequency response in your home theater. Now, in order to do this, you are going to need to buy a measurement mic like the U-Mic 1 or the Dayton EMM6. You unfortunately can't really do this by ear and we need to be able to see our frequency response when we're making adjustments and tweaks to make sure that what we're doing is actually making things better and not worse. Now, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, I post home theater and gaming related content every single week. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, then consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're in REW here and a couple things we wanna do first, we wanna make sure that our receiver settings are good to go. And basically I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna turn off room correction. So for me, it's Odyssey. For you, it might be YPAO or a Direct Live, something like that. Just turn that off. We wanna go down to our speaker settings and we're gonna go into our crossovers and we wanna make sure that all of these, or the fronts at least, are set to the highest point in your receiver. So for me, it's 250. I'll just change it to all. You see, I have it set to 250 there already. And then finally, we'll come into our levels and make sure that our subwoofer is reading zero dB. And as you can see here, it definitely is. So we are good to go there. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure our subwoofers are level matched with one another. And so to do that in REW, it's pretty simple. We will make sure that we're set up properly first. So let's go into preferences and go under sound card. If you're not already there, make sure this is set to Java. We won't be using ASIO for all at this part. My output device is set to my Denon X2300W, that's fine. And then the input device is my U-Mic 1. And I wanna make sure that under Cal files, for you mic one, I have the 90 degree file selected because I have the mic pointed straight up at the main listening position. So 90 degrees is the one we want. Now we want to level match the subs with one another. So I'm gonna go into the generator here in REW and then I'm gonna click on SPL meter. And then we wanna make sure that this is set to C weighting and S for slow. This is gonna make it super easy to take the SPL readings and this number right here is not gonna be jumping all over the place. So make it super simple. And then basically what we wanna do is we wanna use the front left speaker as kind of a baseline SPL. And what I mean by that is we're gonna play a test tone. You see I have it set to speaker cal here and then under output I have it set to L for left front. And basically I'm gonna adjust the volume on my receiver until it reads 75 dB. Now for you, you could do 70 or 65. I honestly wouldn't go below 65 or 70 just because you do need some volume in order to take accurate SPL readings of low frequencies. So I'm gonna set it to 75. So I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna adjust the volume on my receiver until this number reads 75. All right, that's good. So we were right there at 75, bumped down to a 74 a couple times, but nothing too crazy. Now my overall volume, I set at minus 17.5 dB and I'm not gonna touch that. We're not gonna touch that at all during the rest of this process. We don't want that changing whatsoever. So now we wanna set the level of our subs and basically we wanna try to match that number. Now for me, I like to boost it up by two or three dB for each sub. And basically that allows me to bring the volume down a little bit in the receiver on the trim level side. So I'll take that zero dB setting in my receiver under the test tones and then bring it down, you know, a couple dB if I wanted to. But it does give you the option of bringing that sub level up just a little bit if you want that extra boost without going into the plus two dB or something, which I try to avoid on the subwoofers because it can sometimes introduce distortion and noise. So basically we wanna select sub cal under here and we're gonna play that same test tone and I have the front right sub turned on. So I'm gonna hit play and I wanna see around 77 to 78 dB reading on here. All right, so that's perfect. You'll notice it will fluctuate a little bit just because the lower frequencies are a bit harder to read than the, the noise that the speakers were generating. So now I'm gonna turn off the front right sub 
and turn on the back sub right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing and set the level there. All right, so this is the back sub. I'm just gonna hit play. I wanna see that same 77 to 78 dB. All right, that's pretty much on the money. Again, it fluctuates a little bit and the longer you let that play, the more accurate the reading will get because it's actually averaging out whatever it's taking over time. So if you let that play for about 30 to 45 seconds, maybe even a minute, you'll get the actual most accurate reading there. So that is pretty much it for level matching. And now what we wanna do is we wanna go into REW and we wanna take some measurements. And basically we're gonna measure each sub independently. So we're gonna turn one off and take a measurement there. We're gonna turn that one off, turn the other one on, take a measurement there. And then we're gonna turn both on and take a measurement. I'm gonna go ahead and do the back sub, the one right here behind the couch, because I already have that one turned on. So I'll just label this back sub. And for length, 256K is fine. That means it's gonna take about 5.5 seconds to take that measurement. Under range, this is might be set to like 10 to 20,000, which means you're gonna get you know, basically the sub and the speaker, the whole frequency range. We don't want that, we don't need that for right now. So I'm just gonna set this to 200. And for the output, I have it set to L here, that's fine. We don't want this to change. Uh, we're gonna change this later when we go to align the sub with the mains. But for now, L is perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a measurement of the back sub. All right, and then I wanna make sure, you might be on the SPL and Fades tab, just click over here into all SPL. So as you can see here, the frequency response is not great of, for this single sub. And if this is the only sub I had, and I had it here, and I couldn't place it anywhere else, then it's gonna have to be good enough. But we have multiple subs, so it kind of is okay. Again, not ideal, but you'll see once we turn the other sub on and measure them both together, that it's not that huge of a deal. So basically what I wanna do now is turn the other sub on, turn this one off, and take a measurement of that by itself. So I've turned, one, I've turned the other sub on, turned this one off, so I'm gonna take a measurement of that. So I'm gonna label this front right sub, and we're gonna leave everything the same here and just take a measurement. All right, so the frequency response of the front right sub is a bit better down here, but it kind of sucks right here. I mean, we got this this massive null. You know, this comes down to placement, actually. If I move the sub about 10 inches from the wall into the room, then it would actually smooth out pretty well here, but uh, I'm not gonna do that because I do have other subs and stuff in here. So, but basically, so with these two subs combined, what we wanna see is what's called positive summation. Basically, where these lines intersect here, we wanna see this boost up a little bit. What we don't want is to see stuff down here, like you know, creating massive nulls and stuff like that. So we wanna see a, you know, a nice positive line here, you know, something that's a little bit higher than what we have on this blue line or the orange line as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the back sub back on and then I'm gonna take a measurement of both subs. All right, so both subs are on now and I'll just label this both subs gonna have everything set the same way and just take another measurement. All right, so as you can see here with both subs on, this is the highlighted one on the screen there. We got some positive summation. We got some positive gains here. Considering how bad this sub is in terms of frequency response in the room, it's not too bad. If I turn the other two off here real quick, you can kind of see we're fairly flat, which is really good actually. Uh, we have this null here that was created and it's not really in either one of them. There's one here, it could be related to that. There's nothing really here, but I'm not really too concerned with this here because we are gonna be crossing the speakers over. So that will probably end up going away. But basically, you know, this is gonna be kind of a give and take here. So you're gonna adjust phase on one of the subs and it's either gonna boost maybe something down here and then really create a null up here or vice versa. So you're gonna have to kind of play around to see exactly what setting works best for your subs in your room. There's no one size fits all type of setting here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is run through a bunch of settings. I'll do those off camera because honestly, they're just kind of menial adjustments. I'll uh, you know turn the phase to 90 on one sub, take a measurement, turn the phase to 180 on that same sub, take a measurement. What I won't do is make multiple adjustments at one time and take a measurement. Basically, I wanna adjust the phase on one sub. I don't wanna touch the other one. That's just gonna start creating issues and you always wanna keep track of what you're doing so you can revert back to 
you know, square one if you need to. All right, so I've just taken all those measurements, so now it's time to go over them, and you're gonna see some interesting results. So first thing I did was I took the PB2000 Pro, which is the front right sub, and I put the phase on that to 90. And when I turn that on, you could see right away uh, we are losing output here. We gained a little bit of output here, but honestly, I would rather have this green line here than this red line. So 90 on the PB2000 Pro is a no go. Then I put it on 180. And as you can see, we actually improved it a little bit over this one here. Uh, actually a lot of, a lot bit, you know, this is okay. But again, we, we created this kind of funkiness here. We got, this is a little better. I'm not really, again, concerned about that because we're gonna be crossing these over. I don't know, this doesn't really look that great to me. And then what I did was I put the phase back to zero and I inverted the polarity on the PB2000 Pro. And I did that in the app. It makes it super simple, just a simple toggle. As you can see, we actually got some pretty decent gains there. Now. Again, this highlighted one, let me turn this off here. This looks okay. Again, we got this positive summation here with these, uh, but if I turn the other one back on, we lost some output here. Something to keep in mind is if you are going to run Odyssey, it's gonna basically try to EQ this out. And depending on the version of Odyssey or Dirac or YPAO you have, it will do a pretty good job of it. Odyssey is pretty good about flattening this, this line out here. So then I was like, what the heck? Let me take a couple more measurements with the PB2000 Pro inverted or negative polarity. And so I put the phase back at 90. And as you can see, we got a little bit better uh, than it was before, but you know, my gut's telling me to still stick with this green line here. And that's what I would do in this case. And then I jack the phase up to 180 with the polarity inverted. And that's, that's no good. We got this kind of weird null here it, it looks okay but uh, honestly I, I don't want I don't want to see that so then I referred it everything back to normal on the PB2000 Pro and then I just started working with the PB10 so for this I just again went 90 and no good at all I mean we got the we're losing massive base here and then I switched it up to 180 you know it's okay but not really feeling any of these, unfortunately. So in my case, in my room and my subs and everything, this is gonna be different for you. I'm gonna stick with just both subs on I, with no adjustments because making any type of adjustment as you saw will make certain areas better, but worse in other areas. And I really don't want that. And Odyssey is gonna flatten this out anyway. So I'm honestly not too concerned with with the way this looks. And honestly, it looks pretty good considering the placement of that one. Again, not ideal, but uh, we can work with this. So what we wanna do now is if you wanna run Odyssey or any type of room correction, then you wanna do that now because basically we're gonna be adjusting the distance that Odyssey sets or YPAO or whatever to really align these two together. But if that's something that you use, go ahead and do that before you move on to the next step. Otherwise, you might have to make some additional adjustments. All right, so now that you've run Odyssey, a couple things you wanna do first is you wanna go into your receiver settings, go under speakers, and make sure that your crossovers are set properly. So a good starting point here would be 80 hertz, and that's where I'm gonna start, and that's probably where I'm gonna end up. And then we also wanna just make a note of what Odyssey set for your distance. Now, this is gonna be important because we're gonna be adjusting the setting, trying to get our subs aligned with our main front speakers. So now what we need to do is we need to take a measurement of both subs with both the front left and right speakers playing as well. So I'm gonna label this sub alignment. And then for the settings, what we wanna do is under output, we wanna make sure L plus R is selected because when we do this measurement, it's gonna go from the subs to the mains, both at the same time. And that's what we want because we're, we're aligning these with both of them and that's very important. So I'm just gonna take a measurement here and we're gonna see what we get with our crossover set to 80 after room correction. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty good. Let me turn this off here. It got rid of this big null up here, but it kind of created this funky weirdness right here. So what we can do is we can go into our receiver and adjust the distance of our subwoofers in order to try to fix that. So I'm gonna go into here 
I'm gonna go into our, my speakers, my manual setup, and under distances, basically what I wanna do here is I wanna either add or subtract distance from the subs to get this where I want it and try to get the flattest frequency response. Now, if you have two subwoofer settings, then you're going to adjust them in tandem, basically. So what you wanna do is if you're gonna take three feet away from one of them, you're gonna take three feet away from the other one. Or if you're gonna add three feet to one, you wanna add three feet to the other one. Another little tip here is if you're using a Denon or Marantz receiver, then you wanna adjust this. So like we're gonna adjust this, the subwoofer level and then back out one. Otherwise, you're not gonna get any change in your readings and it's, trust me, I've made that mistake and it sucks. So just basically back out one and you're good to go. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna say, you know what, let me go ahead and add two feet to this and see what we get. So we were at 21.5, I'm gonna go to 23.5 feet and I always add it in increments of one or two. I never go 0.5 at first, I always use that to kind of dial it in later. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll take a measurement and just label it whatever one that I selected. So it was 23.5. Okay, so if we look at this here, you can see that that's changed. And that's just from adding two feet onto the distance, which is kind of crazy. You didn't know it could do that, right? What I'm seeing here though is uh, we're reducing this up here. So I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna adjust it again and add two more to it just to see what it does. I'm thinking that this might be the wrong way to go in terms that we might need to take distance away instead of adding it but I just wanna see what it's gonna do. So I'm gonna add two more, so 25.5, and I'm gonna take another measurement. Label this 25.5. All right, yeah, so if we turn off this one here, so this is just 25.5. So 25.5 looks okay, but we're starting to lose output like right around here, and that's what we don't want. We kind of want this to stay relatively the same. Uh, a little variation here and there is not that bad, but not too, you know, to concern with a little variation, but this is kind of a lot. So we don't wanna really take anything away from this if we can help it. So what I'm gonna do is turn that off and go back into the crossover and go back into the distances. It was at 21.5 before. I'm gonna take, let's say two feet away from that. So that would be 19.5 and we'll try that there. Again, I'm gonna back out. We'll take that measurement, label it 19.5. All right, so 19.5, it's kind of fixing this little null here, but it's creating this massive dip. Now, again, this you might be thinking this might be the wrong way, but check this out. So I'm gonna go back into the receiver. I'm gonna change that again, the distances. I'm gonna bring it down to 17.5. So I'm just taking another two feet off of the distance. And again, if you had multiple settings here for subwoofer for one and subwoofer for two, you do this together. So you take two from one, two from the other. And then we'll back out here and we'll take this measurement here and we'll label it 17.5. All right, so if we take a look here at 17.5 and we'll turn it off, turn sub alignment off, if we compare it to 19.5, it actually got better because what's weird is 19.5 created this weird null here, but 17.5 actually brought it back up. And it's also pretty much fixed this weird funky null here. So if we actually take 17.5, we'll turn 19.5 off and compare it to our initial measurement, it looks pretty good. We, we lost a little bit here, nothing too major. It wasn't like, you know, 20, what was it, 25.5 where we were, you know, missing a ton. You know, it's kind of in between. So I would much prefer this setting at 17.5 than even this, because we're, we're not missing this. And this hasn't really changed much at all. So you might just see this and go, you know what, that's perfect, that's good. I don't want to tweak it anymore. And that's fine, you could actually leave it here and it would be great. And what's funny is 17.5 in my room with these two subs is the best I could get. I've gone up a foot to 18.5, I've gone up half a foot to 18 and then basically the same way uh, the opposite direction so 16 and 16.5 and it kind of just messes with it too much and the frequency response sucks so 17.5 in this room is great but basically you can go in there and tweak it as much as you want so after all that is said and done what you want to do is also make sure that funky things aren't going on with both your front left and right speakers by themselves as well as your center and surround speakers. So to do that, what we are gonna do is go back up into preferences and then under sound card, 
You're gonna need ASIO for all for this. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can download it. We're gonna select that and then we're gonna select the device as ASIO for all V2. We wanna make sure that our input is correct. So yes, we're using the U-Mic. And then if it's your first time using ASIO for all, it's gonna ask you for a calibration file. Then you just wanna point it to the same calibration file that you use for the U-Mic down here. So you're just gonna find it and, and add it there. But so what we wanna do now is we're gonna to go to measure and we're just gonna label this left front. And under our output, we wanna select the first one and we're just gonna do a measurement there. Okay, so not too shabby. Uh, we'll turn that off there. Uh, it's actually looking pretty good. Obviously no room is gonna be perfect. You know, we're not using a mini DSP to really dial in the base here. So it's just, you know, it is what it is and, and this looks fine. So now let's go ahead and take a measurement of the front right, front right. Okay, front right's looking okay. It's got a little dip here, but again, nothing nothing too concerning. And so now that those two are done, what we can do is move on and make sure that the crossovers for the center and surround are set properly as well. So I'm gonna go back into my receiver, make note of where my crossover is for my center channel, and that is at 80. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a measurement and we're gonna label this center 80. And then I wanna come down here and change this to three, which is for the center channel. Okay, so we're looking a little funky here uh, so what we can do is actually raise that crossover up a little bit. And basically we're gonna do this until we find the best crossover setting. So I've set it to 90 here and I'm gonna do another measurement and I'll just label this center 90. Okay, so we're actually looking a little bit better. It's raising this up, not really creating too many weird things going on down there. So let's bring it up to 100 and see what we get. Okay, yeah, 100 is looking better than 90 and it's looking better than 80. Let's go up one more and a little tip for you, if you're not getting any sound out of your center or if like you're changing stuff and it's not making a difference, you might still be in stereo mode on your receiver. So if that's the case, go into your receiver and select multi-channel in. Don't select these, we don't want these, just multi-channel in. That's gonna make sure that you're getting the audio to the proper speaker and your front left and right speakers aren't playing everything. So I'm gonna go back in and what was the last crossover I did? I did 100. So let's bump that up to 110. Okay, so if we take a look here, 110 is looking much better than 100. So I'm gonna stick with 110 on this. I don't really wanna go to 120 if I could help it, just because uh, we haven't really corrected anything up here. Although, you know, it might help that null, but this looks pretty good. Again, nothing's perfect. Now you may be thinking, well, my center channel is rated to go down to 60. I wanna use it at 60. Well, you can do that. You just might not have the best frequency response in your room. A speaker's crossover to the subwoofers is basically dependent on your room more so than your speakers. So depending on placement and depending on how your room is and how it's set up, like I have a vaulted ceiling and openings, even though I have curtains and stuff, sound still travels through those openings. It still finds its way in there. So just keep that in mind. Like you might not want to cross your speakers over at what they're rated. You might need to bump that up just to get a better frequency response. Again, it's not your speakers, it's your room doing that. So you, it's up to you to make that decision if you want better frequency response or if you just wanna kind of suck it up and say, you know what, I'm gonna cross these over at what my speakers are rated at because I paid for them. That's completely up to you and if it sounds fine, more power to you. So basically here though, I'm gonna stick with 110 for the center and then we essentially wanna do the same thing with the surround speakers. And I'm just gonna work on this surround speaker on my right surround speaker because I have a bunch of equipment and lights over here. So the reading would not be accurate at all for the left surround. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing off camera and then uh, we'll come back and compare what they look like and pick the best crossover there. All right, so I've taken all those measurements for the right surround speaker and let's just go through them. So right off the bat, right surround at 80 hertz crossover. We got this funky null right around the crossover point. Again, we're crossing over at 80 right about here, but you know, this is around 90. So I would still consider this kind of area in the crossover point. Remember a crossover is not a hard cutoff. You know, it's not just like, okay, 80 hertz, boom, done. It's literally like a mixture of the two. It's almost like a fade in between. I don't know why I'm doing this. But anyway, so 80 hertz, not that great looking. So we check out 90 and already we're starting to see some positive improvements. This null here is starting to raise up. I'll turn off the 80 hertz one. We're looking okay. Uh, it is better than the 80 hertz one in my opinion. And so let's just see what 100 looks like. 
compared to 90 and 100 looks a bit better. You know, we're, we're really starting to see this null here at around the 90 Hertz mark go away. And that's kind of what we want. And then if we deselect 90, and go to 110. I mean, 110 for me is right on the money. It's pretty much gotten rid of that null. It's not perfect. Again, it's it's largely due to your room. At 110, if we compare it to 80, which is where most people probably set their crossover at, you can see we're actually, we got rid of that null completely and we have a much more even response. And this just means that you're gonna be missing out on less bass and less information in that area uh, around the crossover than you were before. So for my money, 110 in my room is the optimum position for my right surround speaker crossover. And what you wanna do here is, again, I can't do this because I have a bunch of equipment, but you wanna go ahead and also test the left surround speaker. Or if you started with the left surround speaker, you also wanna test the right surround speaker. Uh, at that crossover that looked the best on that other speaker, just to make sure nothing funky is going on. And what might happen is you might have to make a small compromise. So you might say, okay, 110 is great on the left surround, but 110 on the right surround creates this weird null. But if I back off that crossover to 100, yeah, it's not as good on the left surround as 110 was, but it's not affecting the right surround like it was when I had it crossover at 110. So you might have to go back and forth just to make sure and make an educated decision on which crossover to choose. But once you do all of this, you know that you're getting the most optimal sound from your speakers as possible with the smoothest response in your room. Now, obviously you can spend more time tweaking this further by playing around with the distance settings and testing various crossovers. Now, eventually you may hit a brick wall in terms of what you can get out of your current system by just using the receiver's built-in settings and room correction, as well as settings on the subs. And at that point, you'll need to decide if you're happy with how things are, or if you're willing to put in the extra work and effort that's required when getting something like a mini DSP. It's worth it in my opinion, but it can be a bit daunting and complicated if you're not familiar with it. If you found this video helpful at all, please give it a like as it helps this video reach far more people. If you have any questions about the stuff I covered in this video, leave me a comment down below and I'll get to it when I can. Thank you for watching everyone and I will catch you in the next one. There's a helicopter going overhead. You're ruining my takes!